I think one thing I definitely want to talk about is the Olympia. And like, because you had explained it to me like, yo, dude, the Olympia is a big deal. And then I ended up looking into it because Jack was like, yo, I'm going to go play the Arnold. That's what I mean, the Arnold. Mm -hmm. Miss Massachusetts was talking about the Olympia, how she went. Yeah, yeah. And all those dudes were like flexing and stuff. Um, But no, you got the Arnold booth. Yeah, I have my first booth at the Arnold this year. Can you elaborate on what the Arnold is for anyone who doesn't know? The Arnold is the biggest fitness convention in the entire world, and it's one of the largest bodybuilding fitness shows in the world as well. So the Olympia is probably bigger for competing, meaning the actual show for lifters, and the Arnold is probably more big for the expo aspect. Okay, and so when you show up there, you're bringing like a team of like 20 people. you got a booth. I'm assuming it's going to be like probably the size of the studio. Uh, The booth is 10 by 10. So, yeah, so like. This wall to this wall. Yeah. This whole box. Yeah. And so you're going to have like a, a tent and then you're going to have all your apparel and then like bystanders just walk by, buy stuff. So that's actually been one of the biggest decisions I've had to make, how we wanted to execute while we were there. And I actually decided to limit apparel. So we're only going to be doing some apparel options. And that's because the main focus is going to be getting Xsurprise downloads. So we're dropping our Xsurprise AI in the next couple days and we're going to have a premium this is the motion fit no that's fit capsule this is exercise ai so it's going to be the personalized workout generator in exercise based off all of your individualized factors that's completely exercise there's no physical product for that so we're going to be doing business cards and flyers and stickers and stuff with qr codes that are offering a special premium incentive like a free week or free month we haven't fully decided yet but some incentive to get them onto the new premium because it's about to explode with our new tech you're gonna have to do some sort of like a model while you're there. We're gonna have a th- we're gonna have a live presentation of the AI technology on a screen. So we'll have people literally being building their workouts at the booth itself, so they can see exactly the functionality and how quick it is. And then we'll ha- also be looking for influencers who want to join the brand and really f- focus on building a whole team there and just kind of getting a whole community sense. And then we'll also sell apparel so we can make some profit while we are there. But the main ROI is gonna be from the attention we get for the app. I'm Mike Rose of Anvolk Aliens, and this is my Emerald Hour. And the double clap signifies the start of an episode. And before we begin, hey everyone, this is Connor Hallway of the Golden Hours Podcast. And listen, if you by chance get any sort of value from this episode, you're in your whip right now, you're like, oh my God, I'm about to just bump this awesome podcast. Dude, when I say value, I mean, did you laugh? Did you cry? Did you learn something? Were you entertained? I just asked that you share it with a friend. And if you don't have friends, you shouldn't be listening to a podcast podcasts plural plural because it's like dude because you can bounce between all our episodes because they're so good i feel that right you're a great guy <laughs> nonetheless before i introduce my guest on the right who is in the building producing today brendan kilcoin coastal kicks <laughs> everyone is everyone who's been starting to produce for the podcast has been adopting a new nickname so i'll have to come up with a new one mc coast is obviously an old one for me and you but i'll, right. I'll figure out something new okay Nonetheless, we have a vet, a podcast vet, my close friend, up on the show for his fourth episode. Mikey Bonkers! Thanks for having me on, Connor. (laughs) Sure, dude. Hey, can you give a quick synopsis of who you are and what you do? Uh, I'm Mike Rosa, and I run Anabolic Aliens. We specialize in... Fitness workouts tailored to your lifestyle. So that's through application of my app, Exerprise. And then also on social media is my main media is YouTube. And then our website, com, where we have memberships for all different fitness packages. And listen, as you guys know, Mike used to be the, just that big YouTube guy who's just like, yo, I'm just going to lift, get swole. But now Mike is quite the entrepreneur. And I would say, dude, 
since we have met, we probably met like a year ago, right? Yeah. You have completely 180'd like your focus. Dude, surrounding myself with people like you and people who are chasing more than what they currently have, it's been the most motivating thing. I feel like I've surrounded myself with a completely different group of people who've helped me push forward. Yeah, but I, I feel the same way, but at the same time, that's on you though too. Like you, your focus has changed, so inevitably you're going to surround yourself with different people. Yeah, but the people, I mean, I still hang around with all my old friends who were out in the party life all the time and going out all the time, and now I'm in my room at 9 p.m. on a Friday night working, but that's just because I love it and I figured out the time is now to be able to build something that I can sustain and then have fun with it later and celebrate with all my friends. I agree. So when you're making plans now, obviously, I mean, you work on such a day-to-day basis, like, all right, what can we get done today? What we can be effective at today? How, how do you assess your progress now? Are you thinking like a five-year term, seven-year term? I think actually focusing on going forward has opened up the first visual of what I see for the future for myself. And I've started, I've never had long-term goals before, and I started making them and have stepping stones to reach them. I've always been just do as much as I can and keep producing, keep building, keep trying to expand. And now it's actually stepping stones of get to here, get to the next level, and then have an end goal of why those stepping stones are important to actually have a value in the end. Yeah. I'm the, I, see, me and you, we work very differently, but that's one thing we agree on is like the growth has to be so systematic. Mm-hmm. Like you got to get the little chunks done to like get to the bigger chunk. Exactly. And one of the things that I've actually really held dear to me since you told it to me over text is one thing that has stuck with me very strongly has been you said that you'd rather have your friends instead of going out right now to like Ned's Divine, you'd rather have your friends come hang out on your yacht in five years. And that fucking fired me up, dude. That literally spoke to me pretty hard. <laughs> What's the truth, dude? I where I really like right now, obviously such a grind phase, we're in the back of the warehouse, but like I get off pause, but like I get like the biggest rush when I create opportunities for my friends right now mm. more than anything. Don't you feel the same way? Dude, I just hired one of my best friends, Kirby to be my exercise recruiter. And it's the coolest thing being able to actually take on people you've grown up with and have seen you change and help them change themselves. I'm not going to test any of what you and Jack do together. Like to me, at all but like I, i'm pumped that like you guys have like a a fluid relation working relationship and like that you met jack through me and now you guys like he's helping build your brand like that shit makes me fucking pumped yeah dude a couple of people you already connected me with i fully plan on having on full-time salary within the next year yeah let's discuss that so every <laughs> time i bring a new a new someone around right or like there's someone in the mix mike just snatches them off the waiver wire he's got surf mike working for him building a blog He's got male model Max, young entrepreneur, computer brain. What's he doing right now? Like uh, some sort of marketing for you? Max? Yeah. He's handling all of the websites. So we've done, we've completely changed around our style SEO, on the website. keyword. But like just the entire what we're offering, we've realized it's been, there hasn't been a focus on actually creating a value on the website. It's been me making content for years. And now the transition is, okay, we have the audience, we have the attention. How do we now make a product and make it presentable to actually help the paying consumer? And so what, and just back to you snatching the team up, his go-to videographer is Frankie Films, classic. (laughs) Who else is on the team right now? I just got a new member on the team as an official Anablog videographer, uh, Mm -hmm. Grant Labute. He's another YouTuber in the area who's already doing incredible work. What does he shoot on? Your a7 III? I have no clue what he shoots on, but we got him hooked up with Final Cut, the new Premiere version, so. The new premiere. The ver- newest version of the Final, Final Cut. Cut. Yeah. I know. Me and you are Final Cut Warriors. It, I Everyone shits on us, dude. Yeah. It's so easy to use. It's the best. Dude. Yeah. I haven't used I haven't used Adobe, though. So. You've never used Premiere? No. Nah. I learned it a little bit. Dude, I love Final Cut. It's, like, so simplistic. Mm-hmm. You can still get exact. You know exactly how to get what you want. You know the thing You do your little, uh, <laughs> your little sp- lower third sparkle transition with your text. You like that. You like that. I, I know. Uh, Dude, I actually really miss your Fenway apartment. That ratchet spot. I, I love that spot, dude. That was just that grind spot. Yeah, chilling with the rats. <laughs> well, Brent, well, Big B over here has got an, a rat issue in yeah, Southie. Th- we had the exterminator come in this morning. 
So Damn. hopefully when I get back, it's all cool. Bro, we didn't have like Was it a rat th- or, ma- no, or mice? No, just mice, thankfully. Mice. Yes. We didn't have like mice or rats in our apartment, but we had fucking rats the size of cats in the alley right next to us. Oh, yeah. That's that's like Austin Brighton. It's just, like, <laughs> they took over there. Dude, well, he had these big-ass dumpsters outside his crib, and he had a lot. You had a lot of activity outside your apartment. Yeah, there was some sketchy shit going on. There was some on. crazy shit going on back there, bro. Holy shit. You never felt comfortable outside. You, I remember you coming over and be like, I don't like being in this alley. Yeah, the alley freaked me out. I loved the dungeon, though. The dungeon was great. Yeah, I mean, it was a means to an end. I remember, though, when you, when I was like, bro, I love that your spot. You're like, nah, dude. Next spot, I'm going to Seaport. You just didn't want to, like, boss up and get someone fat. Well, I realized it's the same reason that we're in this place right now. Like, there's no, we're putting our money into building our business versus getting expenses that we don't necessarily need right now when we can do it in a cheaper way to more optimize where we're trying to go. So, for me, I was like thinking about exactly that when I was moving. And I was like, I could either go to an outskirt of Boston, be near the city, and have a lot more space for a much cheaper rate, and then put money into things I'm trying to grow with my business versus ball out right now, which I could on a seaport apartment, but it would kind of just be me trying to position my status versus mm-hmm. actually yeah, like pr- you go forward. Like be a dick swinger. Exactly, and I don't need to be a dick swinger now. <laughs> I'm the same way. Like I, Everyone asks me, like, why don't you ever get like an office? I'm like, dude, because you can do work anywhere. Mm-hmm. You can go to any coffee shop. I... I pay for the wi-fi here so it's like i can set up here i can go to a hotel and do work i don't ever know what why would you need an office yeah i you, mean you for can me go though, down the street and talk to someone if you want like filming though so my everyday youtube series i go home to film all the time and i realized going for that travel it adds an extra 40 minutes a day not a lot of time but just the fact of me having to go there come back home and do that every single day it was a little bit demotivating for me just because it was a little bit inconvenient. So I feel like for me, I need just a place, a new place to film consistently for that convenience. Did you like filming here? I did, but it was too loud for my YouTube. It was, there was a lot of background. The, the acoustic. Yeah. So what I need, I want Did my you own get place. You, you, yeah. You want your own studio. Exactly. We will get one. I'm look- Before we're 30, we'll get like a fat oh, megaplex yeah. in the city. I'm not worried about that. I mean, in the next like six months, I need a place to be filming, and I just want to dope it out with my own alien and shit like you do. You Arnie. Know? I came up with the name. Arnie the Alien. Arnie the Alien. Arnie. <laughs> and then we'll have Jack do. We'll have him create a, a mini animation of Derek the Deer and Arnie the Alien, and they go on a mission together through the city. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> and they're looking for someone. <laughs> hilarious. Um, okay, so I think one thing that me and you are big on providing the value. I think one thing I definitely want to talk about is the Olympia. And like, because you had explained it to me, like, yo, dude, the Olympia is a big deal. And then I ended up looking into it because Jack was like, yo, Olympia I go or the me. Arnold. That's what I mean, the Arnold. Miss mm-hmm. Massachusetts was talking about the Olympia, how she went. Yeah, yeah. And all those she- dudes were like flexing and stuff. Um, but no, you got the Arnold booth. Yeah, I have my first booth at the Arnold this year. Yeah. C- can you elaborate on what the Arnold is for anyone who doesn't know? The Arnold is the biggest fitness convention in the entire world, and it's one of the largest bodybuilding fitness shows in the world as well. So the Olympia is probably bigger for competing, meaning the actual show for lifters, and the Arnold is probably more big for the expo aspect. Okay, and so when you show up there, you're bringing like a team of like 20 people. you got a booth. I'm assuming it's going to be, like, probably the size of this studio. Uh, the booth is 10 by 10. So, yeah, so, like, this wall to this wall. Yeah. This whole box. Yeah. And so you're going to have, like, a, a tent, and then you're going to have all your apparel, and then, like, bystanders just walk by, buy stuff. So that's actually been one of the biggest decisions I've had to make, how we wanted to execute while we were there. And I actually decided to limit apparel. So we're only going to be doing some apparel options. And that's because the main focus is going to be getting XSurprise downloads. So we're dropping our XSurprise AI in the next couple of days. And we're going to have a premium. This f- is the motion fit. No, that's fit capsule. This is XSurprise AI. So it's going to be the personalized workout generator in XSurprise based off all of your individualized factors. That's completely XSurprise. There's no physical product for that. So we're going to be doing business cards and flyers and stickers and stuff with QR codes that are offering a special premium 
incentive, like a free week, a free month. We haven't fully decided yet, but some incentive to get them onto the new premium because it's about to explode with our new tech. You're going to have to do some sort of like a model while you're there. We're going to have a th- we're going to have a live presentation of the AI technology on a screen. So we'll have people literally being building their workouts at the booth itself so you can see exactly the functionality and how quick it is. And then we'll ha- also be looking for influencers who want to join the brand and really f- focus on building a whole team there and just kind of getting a whole community sense. And then we'll also sell apparel so we can make some profit while we are there, but the main ROI is going to be from the attention we get for the app. Okay. And how how does the app make money? The free app makes money off ads. So we're having a Facebook ads, Google ads, and basically it's kind of like YouTube in a sense, basically. Where oh, you, so, uh, so like a third party will come in and say, hey, can we advertise on your app? And through the third party ad service. And, and so something will pop up? Yeah, like you have to set up ads. It's basically like if you have a blog, you can put ads on your blog. It's the same concept. It's just you have to actually implement them into the app and then the strategies like where to place ads and all different types of ads like banner ads, interstitial ads, and all those things. So how can I? How much would it cost me to pay for uh, – like if I want to advertise the podcast in some sort of banner ad? Is it a co- is it cost per click method? I don't know how much it would cost because you would have to go through like Facebook or Google. It wouldn't. The ads don't go through – me they don't go through the app they go you hired google other people go to google yeah google like it's google it ads facebook ads so those companies are going to them to actually have the advertisements placed on things that are getting publicity so when people are onto the app and if a lot of users are onto the app the higher the ads are going to be because more people are seeing it dude i might just push an ad on your app i would love to i don't know how you would do that though like who decides what ad because we don't decide what ad goes on our app I'm sh- well, whoever reaches out to you is probably like, hey, I would love to be on the top fitness app. See, we, they don't reach out to us, though. They go. That's what I'm saying. Where they reach out to Google saying, hey, what are the top five fitness apps in Boston? Mm-hmm. And they would be like, okay, I'm surprised. So I know ads in that sense, you can do different types of ads. And I mean, there's bidding wars. Like you can bid f- to be on the highest fitness apps because they convert the most. But they're going to cost way more money. Like, for example, an average ad, free ad per day right now would be about 10 to 15 dollars for a free ad user clicking on it versus we're also right between the barrier of onto that next ad bracket and instead of 10 to 15 we're looking at 70 to 85 so that's per ad instead of just the 10 to 15 so that number is significantly higher and just adding double to that it's so as you get more free users the ad significantly increase for free speaking of which i actually just finally developed the first ad template and ad kit for the podcast and so we have we have a sample ad up there with a company called paychecks and i have all of our pricing it's all done well and this is my theory on our podcast and monetizing it i can't i cannot advertise to a million people for you i can't mike might be able to but i can't advertise to the right people in boston for you and that's a fact. And so we have our new template up there. We're eager to work with small businesses and entrepreneurs right now because those are the people I kind of know. And those are the people that are tuning into everything are the people who want to build their business in the city. That's definitely one of the biggest differences between you and me because I work much more on a global sense and you're just dominating the city. Yeah, that's something we discussed like a year ago. I was like, bro, mm-hmm. I got Boston goals. <laughs> you're like, dude, I got goals in India and Singapore, man. <laughs> Hey, I mean, India's converted the best right now. I'm going over there. <laughs> I wonder who's working out. Like, isn't that crazy? You like, yeah, there's some random Indian kid right now in this crib doing push-ups, looking at you. <laughs> I mean, India's the one of the fastest growing fitness markets because they don't have a ton it's of equipment. It's the fastest growing country, bro. Well, they don't have a ton of uh, equipment accessibility, so they love my body weight home routines. Yeah, so like, do you ever think about that? Like, who actually is watching your shit in India? Bro, I have no idea. The comments are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that shit was hilarious. So w- we uh, we posted the pitch competition from the event on Mike's page, and all these people commented. They're like, "Is that dude?" Because there was me and Mike in the, the the intro, and the comment was like, "Is that dude a giant, or is Mike just a midget?" <laughs> <laughs> A five nine. <laughs> Everyone's like, nah, Mike's four ten. This show is hilarious. It's getting roasted. Well, bro, I, remember when I got torn apart for having pit stains? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you get roasted on everything, dude. I know. They're like, this dude's mad annoying. Uh. 
Oh, what they call? What they had a nickname for you? I forget. It's something about your pits, though. Every, there was like twenty comments acknowledging it. Someone called me like Pete Pittsfield because <laughs> I had like pit stains from our party. It was pretty funny, actually. Um, hey, how stoked were you about the event, the pitch competition? It was awesome. I it turned was, out exactly what we wanted. I was really happy and actually surprised how many people were excited for that pitch competition. Because I mean, it was a little smaller scale, but like the fact that people were that excited means we can make it even bigger. Yeah, that and. Like, one, shout out to Max for actually being the first one to pitch because that's, like, really scary. Yeah. But I didn't know people love pitching their product so much. I Normally, I think people are really apprehensive, but people, like, really get pumped to talk about their products. Yeah. Like, that would be tough for you to go into public and be like, hey, I'm Anabolic Aliens, and this is what we do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, slugs, you can keep this part in, but we're going to cut that quick little three-minute gap we just had. There was some sort of, like weird Texas Chainsaw Massacre going on <laughs> in the warehouse. Anyway, we were discussing what? I don't know. <laughs> that you're a great guy. <laughs> um, can you kind of talk about the importance of, like, why it was such a big deal for you to get a spot at the Arnold? Like, how it legitimizes your business way more? Because I know it was, like, dumb expensive. There's 100,000 people, over hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of people going to the Arnold Convention, and... They're all there because they love fitness. What better place to market a brand that you're trying to get even more attention for? So having that actual in-person communication with people is so much more valuable than just doing ads online because you actually can build a little bit of a relationship even if it's in a quick time and show them functionality and show them why it's valuable versus trying to get them through paid advertising. Now, obviously advertising like that works, but this is an in-person type of paid advertising where you're able to hit them on a more personal level. And the fact that everyone is there already loving the fitness industry, looking there to meet new brands and get new information, the just putting myself in that situation is incredibly valuable. How... On a, a scale for you, because you're focused on building a business, and I was trying to assess myself last night, actually, what is more, do you think you're more selfish or selfless in building your business? I think I've actually been selfless, and it's been hurting me, meaning I need to be a little more selfish in focusing on the things that I need to do to help the actual consumer first versus being really nice with giving people kind of free stuff instead of putting my time and getting the money I need to actually put into helping their experience better. So there's it, it's, it's interesting. It comes to be more of a, the more selfish you are, the more selfless you can be. I agree. Brennan, what do you think like on a, if you have a scale of 100%, where do you stand on the selfish to selfless line? I tend to be more selfless. And I, I would agree, like, in a way, like, when you put everyone else before you, like, you can you can start to hurt, like, hurt yourself, like you were saying. Like, you, you need to take care of yourself, too. And I, I feel like it's mostly based on personality, right? I know, like, you're talking about running a business, but, like, I, I feel like everyone can relate. Some people just tend to be either more introspective or look, mm -hmm. inward looking or outward looking. And sometimes when you're more inward looking, you tend to be... A little more selfless, I think. Mm -hmm. See, I'd agree. I, I think I'm pretty selfish in terms of trying to grow this. And I realized, remember we had a conversation where I was like, dude, I'm just like burnt, man. Yeah. I realized if I, whenever I give a lot, I f like if I'm ever in a, p a place where I'm like, dude, I'm so burnt out, it's because I'm thinking too selfishly. And then if I'm just selfless for like a, a good like month, two months, I'm just giving and giving and giving. I feel like way more energized. It's just this weird phenomenon. You know what I've been noticing for myself is that I have a very hard time doing things my way actually. And what I mean is when I am very open to listening to other people's ideas and I feel like I've been very selfless in the sense of letting people put ideas into my head and kind of tell me how I should do things which has caused a lot of change. And what I've been doing in the last couple months is focus, like I've realized I've built this business off my decisions, off my work ethic, off the things I stand for. I need to help people underneath me execute on the similar mindset and concept while allowing them their freedom of creativity. It's leadership. 
yeah, I mean, that's, but it's hard for me to do. I guess what I'm saying is I, I like to make other people happy and being the one in the powerful position having to make these decisions, you, you have to understand you can't make everyone happy, and that's really hard. One thing I'm realizing, though, about now having a team is you, you're only as fast as you make your team. You're working for them. Absolutely. <laughs> and and so I'm trying my best to put everybody in the best possible position because I mean, I don't on a an hourly commitment, how much is Surf Mike working for you right now? A week. I mean, he's in school still. 10 to 15. Yeah. So I mean, he's still for him it's like a part-time right now. Yeah. And so I'm what I'm trying to do with everybody else like Slugs and Sam I'm trying to do as much as I can for them because I know they have other goals. Have you like sat down with Mike and be like, yo, I, I want to build my business huge. I know you want to be part of it, but what do you want to do long term? I've actually sat down with everyone and I haven't even gotten anyone on board who I haven't had the conversation with because all the people I'm trying to get on my team right now, which is very important to me, is to build people who see growth who vibe with the company and see themselves being able to handle a lot more responsibility down the road. Realistically, the people I'm getting on now are more part-time positions, and that's so we can build up and scale the business into a point where we can actually have them on full-time salary, and then eventually their positions will be set, and then they can start building teams underneath them. So it's like a chain so we can keep on having work even more efficiently and come out at a faster rate. So it really depends exactly on what people want, but my whole goal right now is getting people on the team who want to grow with anabolic aliens and that's why i'm setting them up with a ton of growth potential yeah and are you, and are you giving them space to do their thing exactly one of the main things is if you work with me i will 100 percent support you doing your own thing too but that's why like i said i have to get into that leadership position of saying yo we need to execute on this we need to do this we need to do this which i've always been oh what do you think we should do because that's how i am comfortable but i have to step out of my comfort zone and be like yo we got to do it this way we got to do it this way and that's when i what i was saying earlier about the selfish thing like instead of saying oh you can figure it out you i trust your way you got to say all right let's do it this way and then if it's not working we take a little bit more creativity from other external sources and then see how we can combine efforts to make it exceed but like the way you are right now you're the one who's worked to get here your decisions your execution has been why you've been successful so we have to help lead the ones beneath us in a state that they're able to grow and aid that success and help them be successful in the process see one thing a lot of people don't realize though is like you understand you're at the certain point you're at and I'm at the certain point I'm at because we t we've taken certain lumps that nobody was there for and nobody saw. Oh, yeah. You know, like the first two years where, like, you weren't catching any checks? Mm -hmm. Like, that for me was like Coach Connie. Like, no, I took all those L's to my face every time alone. And obviously, B, you were a mad supportive friend. But, like... Those are the most important molding, I think. Don't you? Well, you have to learn. Like, the only way to grow is failing. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You're going to just... And I still take L's every day, but, like, they're going to have a period when you start, start, where it's just like, dude, you don't even know if you're making progress. You're like, yeah. But the realism is you're one move away from that next level. It's just figuring out what that move is. And then if you're able to calculate how you got there, it's what the next step is, you know? What do you think about working on your weaknesses? That's exactly what I'm doing now. Everything I'm trying to do now with building the employee team is stepping completely out of my comfort zone. Like I am ve It's very hard for me to give people responsibilities that I've been doing myself for three years and then not monitoring it 24-7. It's out of my hands, I guess. So I guess I feel a little bit powerless in that sense. But then the whole point of getting them in there is so you it takes that time. stress off me and gives me more time. And that's why the people I'm choosing right now are very, very important to me. And they're going to become like family because, I mean, you ha I want the people to believe in what we're doing, mm -hmm. not just look for a temporary job because they're looking for a part-time position in college. I want them to be able to come out of college with a full-time position where they're going to have a whole team under them and be able to truly grow. So where are you looking now for employees? Like, what are you, what are you still trying to fill? See, that's the thing. I'm not really trying to fill, fill anything right now. I don't, there's, I'm in that stepping stone where we're starting to execute on all the 
roles that each employee is taking and it's starting to really skyrocket the business. Everything is starting to go next level like incredibly faster. The percentages of ROI have significantly increased and when we get to that next point, it'll start building more of a team because realistically, 24, we don't need we don't need a ton of money. What do we need to do? We don't have a family. We like we have a family. We don't have kids. I mean, so it's not like we have a ton of expenses other than really just living. So for me, I'm just dumping that back in and building a team that's going to make us significantly more money in five years. What about taking risks? Can you elaborate on your thought on how you assess and calculate risk? The Arnold is probably the biggest risk I've taken since developing my app. Biggest Enterprise. financial risk. Yep. Biggest financial risk. Can and you can you just maybe give us a ballpark of how much it's going to cost you? Around thirty thousand. Woo! Okay, <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> oh, okay, sack boy. Hi, right, boy. <laughs> but uh, that's why I'm not balling out on weekends and shit. You know, this is a goal. I do know. <laughs> I do it myself. I get it. But like. The whole point of that is even if it's not an immediate ROI, the amount of attention and just respect you get for being a brand at the Arnold and showing like, yo, I'm doing this. This is what I stand for is exactly how you're able to set up a foundation to truly scale. So I'm putting my place in the fitness industry at that booth. How how many days is it? Sorry. Uh, It's a three-day convention. Three days. And Mm -hmm. like how many hours each day? It's like I'll be there like 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. So it's a lot. Part, obviously part prepping and then like the doors. It's open. like eight to five. Yeah. So, okay. and it's, yeah, it's three days and then people are coming all internationally. Yeah, that's a good amount of exposure though. Oh, it's, it's yeah. like 400,000 people a day. Yeah. That's wild. <laughs> that is insane. Oh my God. So where's the 30 K going to? How does, how do the funds allocate? How much is the table? How so, much is your Airbnb? So I got a 16 house Airbnb yeah, for everyone. Yeah, that's excessive. <laughs> 16 bedroom well we have 15 people coming so i went i don't want to be a brand it's like yo come stay on the floor i want to actually give people some lo- nice stuff i want them to be happy <laughs> okay so yeah, i got a 16 house airbnb where is this in ohio columbus? columbus ohio yeah so it's not too expensive the airbnb was only like a couple grand and then the like getting apparel is going to be a couple grand getting all the actual inventory is going to be like stickers and all that stuff it adds up and then the booth itself was a couple grand and then flying some people out and oh, you're then paying for some flights a couple flights and you rolled your eyes you're pissed <laughs> <laughs> no no i'm not pissed it's just a lot of money are you flying like gabby short out yeah <laughs> and you never met her in person no nah. this dude is insane <laughs> dude it take but the reason i'm i want her it's so insane. bad <laughs> brendan knows gabby you went to college with her yeah. Yeah. I know who she is. Yeah. I don't really know her well. But the reason I, I literally just linked him on a text <laughs> once. Did you guys have you FaceTime or you yeah, get a free her? flight? <laughs> well, dude, crazy dude. The reason I want her so badly on the team is she's fit and she's hot. No, she's with well yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> she's with Bar- um Barry's boot camp. She's really upcoming in the whole Barry's yeah, industry. She's a boss. Which bro. is a whole nother way that I can market Exerprise. So there's a ton of strategy and she seems dope, so I want to meet her in person and be like, see what we can do. Yeah, she's full speed. You're gonna like her a lot. She's yeah. like totally full and she's speed. getting into acting and shit over there in L.A. So you never know what can happen. I, I, me and Jack saw her at Barry's. It was great. She's a, she's the man. She's like totally type A. Like let's get it done. I'm gonna like work hard for my goals. Yeah. Sent it to L.A. Let's go. And she's already on contract with us for Exercise Athletes, so she's gonna how be many, one of the staples. How many other girls team. are you flying out? Flying, uh, just two girls are flying out. Not flying out too many people. Are you driving? We're driving with three chicks from the area. And not in the Camry. Or not in the Corolla. <laughs> Are you taking the little red car? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. With how many? With five people? Yeah. So Jack will be in the front seat and then <laughs> three chicks in the back. Dude, just say, just pay Jack to take his CRV. Just to, because he has way more space. S- but that would be crazy gas. Why would we need more space? We have we another. crazy gas. It's a Honda. Well, we have another car coming that's going to take the stuff. So well, Grant's driving separately and taking a little detour on the way there with for like some family stuff. So we're just going to put stuff in his car because he's going to get there at the same time. Yeah, but it's a, just a bigger car compared to a smaller car, and it's pretty much the same fuel efficiency. And you just think? Sa- absolutely. CRV, like my Civic does really good mileage. Yeah, I mean, I'm driving, so. You like <laughs> wanna, Mike has the tiniest little car, dude. 
<laughs> no, I'm getting an anabolic car this summer or next summer. One of those two, whenever it runs up. What, with like stickers on, on I'm it? I'm going to get it detailed out with anabolic. <laughs> and <laughs> expensive. It's expensive. Oh, is it? Business you expense, write it off? dude. Yeah. Were you, gonna, you, you remember the old studio? They did it right there is where they decal it. The same space. Oh, no shit. Don't you remember how like you go in the garage bay? That's where, that's what they do in that garage bay. They oh, do all okay, stickers. okay. Little yeah. West Coast Customs. Oh, yeah, you should do a Pimp My Ride. <laughs> Dude, it's going to be dope. I'll get to get what the kind of car? I don't know. Probably something. Are you going to get a new whip? Definitely a muscle car. Like what? I don't know. Something that would look dope with neon Camaro? and black. And <laughs> yeah. What about a Mustang? Uh, maybe. I don't really know too much about cars, to be honest. I'm just going to be like, yo, bro, what looks dope? And tell me to get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do with your camera, too. Didn't you go to Best Buy? Like, hey, dude, what's the best camera? What's the best drone? Yeah. <laughs> Did you get the drone? No, nah, I didn't get a drone. I got a, a bunch of different lens. Oh, the a7 III and a bunch of lenses. Yeah. The lenses are more, like, freaking wicked way expensive. More, way more expensive. Yeah, Sam loved using the a7 III at the event. Hell yeah. It's a sweet camera. It is nice. I wish I knew how to use it well myself. <laughs> you're, not a, you're not a big cinematographer. Okay, so Arnold, cool, got that done. Number two, I actually do, I thought this was certified, but like I would actually like to challenge you to, to lean out. Who can get leaner? What do you mean certified? I thought before we agreed on this. I, no, I'm, I told you I'm down. I think... W- See, but how are we going to judge it? Is it going to be based on the biggest difference or who loses the most body fat? Because you already you have a little more body fat on you to begin with. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say fat <laughs> as hell, bro. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? How can we judge it for who wins? It and what do you want to put on it? The only realistic way we can do it is um, change. Like from where you are at the beginning to how much you lose. But like if you're already wicked low, you're not going to lose a substantial amount, which may not make it possible for us to really compete like that. Should it be like ending physique? Pause. But like who has the better physique at the end given our body types? I mean, I'm going to smoke you. I guess that's more subjective then, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it depends on how people want to look. And if people are more my height, they're probably going to be built more like me. If they're more tall like you and they like your physique, they're going to want to probably look like you. Well, then maybe we can assess it based on who has a... There must be some sort of equation... Like, because me, let's say right now I'm at like 11% body fat and I'm trying to get down to six or like 7% and you're at like 14% and you're trying to get down to like, what we could use is actually muscle to fat ratio. Yeah. Okay. How do we calculate that? 3d body scan at Jimmit. Dude, are you sure that scan works? Even if it doesn't, I mean, it's a way to analyze body fat and then we take the body fat from like a biological impedance scale and then my Omron body fat handheld analyzer, then just kind of take the average and then subtract the body fat percentage from the total amount we weigh and there's our muscle mass ratio. Okay, fine. My date is May 1st I'm, and I'm starting on Sunday. That's Your date is May 1st? That, that's when I think the competition should end. Well, how many months is that? Two and a half months. Okay. Ten weeks to cut. So you're going to stop cutting right when it starts getting beach season? I want to be at maintenance all beach season. I don't you wanna, do? I don't want to cut to the summer. True. Remember what happened to me last summer, how, like, fucking stringy I got? Yeah, a little string bean. Um. <laughs> <laughs> a little string bean. I think we should do it May, to May 1st. And then let's just well, put I a little skin in the game. Like, let's put something on it. And so then you can go tell everyone on YouTube, and I can tell everyone on the podcast who won. Or we can, like, assess it May 1st. Yeah, I mean, you want to actually make it like. Do you want to do money? Stat? Do you want to do? We could, yeah, I do, and I want to do before and after pictures. All right. I think we should do it, but I'm trying to think of a good a good prize to do. Um, we we can do money. How much? Hundred. How's this? I think this would be really, and I'll dive for the squad. Why don't we do this? I'll buy your entire team Chipotle. If if I lose, you okay. have to buy my entire team Chipotle if you lose. All right. <laughs> Let's do it. That's a good deal. I love Chipotle. <laughs> All right. That's a deal. Okay. That, number one. Two. So what is your plan for cutting right now? I'm doing a zigzag diet. Elaborate. So basically, it's a really, really low diet during the week. So below a thousand caloric deficit and then i go basically to maintenance on the weekends to recycle my hormones and keep my metabolism guessing 
Also, this is a rule. No supplements. No drugs. No clenbuterol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm taking fucking (laughs) pre-workout and shit, though. Yeah, you can take your BCAAs, your pre-workout, and your whey, whatever. But no steroids. Yeah, obviously. Okay, I should (laughs) make sure, bro. (laughs) Um, Okay, so zigzag diet. And what are you doing for like a sample meal right now? It's all hard body. Yeah, I'm I'm very numerical when it comes to dieting. So I'm doing 1,500 calories Monday through Friday, which is freaking nothing. And then like 2,800 Saturday and Sundays. And that's still at a, a slight deficit for you, 2,800. Very slight, yeah. And that's just because I'm trying to do it rapidly for the Arnold. I won't do that. It's not sustainable to be that low. And, and how much? How many days a week are you, like, lifting heavy with compound movements? Five. And that's consistent for you? Well, I've been doing five days a week lifting and then seven days a week of leg day every day and then cardio six days a week. Okay. (laughs) So my plan for the cut is this. I'm doing – I'm probably going to be eating at about, like, a 2,600-calorie deficit because I don't want to lose all my muscle. Deficit? No, no, no. Excuse me. (laughs) 2,600 calories daily. I'm going to be increasing my 18-hour window fast to a 20-hour window fast consistently. And I'm going to toss in a one. You're going to fast for 20 hours? Absolutely. Every day? I'm going to win. I'm going to win, Mike. And, <laughs> and then, then you're going to feast with just one meal? I'm probably going to do OMAD one meal a day. And then I'm going to toss in one 24-hour fast weekly. I'm also going to do 20,000 steps a day. And my sample meal, for the most part, is going to be really protein-dense. So... I'm excited for him to do this because I'm going to make a prediction and he's going to lose a lot of muscle doing it that way. So his ratio will be terrible. That's what you think? Yep. We'll see. (laughs) I think what you're going to do is you're going to be, if I'm like being a competitive psycho, I think what you're, what's going to happen with you is you're going to keep starving yourself. And one day you're going to be like, dude, I'm so fucking hungry. I had, my biggest problem is binge eating because when I get in that mood and I eat, I fucking eat. You go in. <laughs> yeah. And that's actually something that I've been very actively aware of. And one of the biggest things I'm trying to change because dieting is whatever to me. But once I get into that binge state, it's game over and it fucks up my whole week. Yeah, I feel you. Are you, when you binge, is it like, you don't eat a lot of trash food, but you eat like a lot of good food for you? That's what happens to me if I binge. I have a grease tooth. And as soon as I bite that piece of pizza... There comes fucking everything else. Ice cream's really? coming after. Sweets? Yeah, I'm not a big a sweets guy. I just love ice cream. I don't like candy and that shit, but I'll get a whole Sunday. <laughs> B, what's your biggest crux when it comes to like, Brennan's a foodie. Brennan, like yeah. what's your biggest crux? Probably late night. Like I eat pretty healthy, like lunch and dinner. Just if I'm like chilling at night and like I have nothing better to do. That's kind of, you know what I mean? So that, what do you have though? What's up? What's your thing? Oh, what, what's my thing? I I mean ice cream too. Hell yeah, Ben and Jerry's. Yeah, you got. It. <laughs> you, you, I mean, I'm sure you end up eating the whole pint. Oh, of course. It's like easy. Dude, it's like 1,200 Easy calories, mar- too. Oh, no, it's absurd. <laughs> Smart yeah, product. There you go. That's your diet. <laughs> is, is it 1,200 calories for the whole thing? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. No, it's a low calorie, which is really fire, are these bars called Yasso bars. Have you seen them? They're these Greek yogurt, like frozen yogurt bars, and they taste fire, and they're 100 calories, and they're very filling. Interesting. Yeah, so. I like the Halo Top ice cream, too. How is that low-cal? Low-cal, high-protein. Oh, protein. Mm-hmm. Protein ice cream. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. It doesn't taste like normal ice cream, but it tastes enough to satisfy that craving. What are your thoughts on the vegan diet right now? Because it's so trendy. I mean, if I if you can eat ve- I think if you eat vegan and can still maximize your macros, then it's the healthiest way you can do it, honestly. But 90% of people who eat vegan don't eat enough protein and become deficient in iron and completely screw up their bodies and metabolisms and ability to grow. So, And vitamin B too, like mm-hmm. the omegas. And mm-hmm. that's exactly. Yeah. Like v- I think if you can get your nutrients and macros optimally through v- eating a vegan diet – I mean, it's natural as hell. It's the most natural thing you can do. So there's, it's just not enough people do it correctly and can maximize their diets that way. Did you Have you changed Surf Mike's mindset at all on it? Because he's heavy vegan. He's changed my mindset, if anything. I, like, like, I don't foresee myself being vegan because I love meat, but realistically, I v- believe I'd be a lot more naturally energetic and feel a little more just 
healthier if I wasn't eating some of these processed things that, that I do eat to maximize the diet. Yeah, that's another clause for this lean out challenge is I, I will probably not be eating. I'll be eating very little processed food. Like I'm definitely going to cut processed food completely. Have you ever logged your protein before? I, I have the app. I log every meal. So you do you pay attention to your protein yeah. intake? What do you normally do in a day? Uh, I do about 250 grams while I'm cutting. Yesterday, I did 258 grams of protein. Yeah, that's good. Because when I first started logging my macros, my protein was incredibly low. And that's after I thought I was being actively trying to eat higher protein. What do you high, in a high fats diet? I just, because I love my meat, like I was eating very high fat and the protein wasn't coming close to the amount of protein I need for the day without the fats being incredibly high too. Oh, you were eating fatty meats like Hamburg. I mean, I guess it's just like if you don't actually think about what type of protein sources you're getting in, those fats will add up. So you have to kind of really focus on limiting the fat intake, but also maximizing the protein intake. And that can be really hard to fine tune, especially if you're eating meat, which is why if you can do it vegan, you don't have to worry necessarily about all those extra saturated fats. So let's say someone wants to just sample lean out for the summer, right? Let's say Brennan's like, okay, like I'm, I'm getting into lifting. I'm going to try it out. Like, I mean, I've lifted before, but I want to like go hard on my diet for the spring. What are, what's like the most basic package you could give someone to, for leaning out? Food or just an entire workout and nutrition plan. So the best way to lose body fat and also maintain size is the recomposition style. So you'd be lifting honestly heavier. So you'd be focusing more on a strength training, hypertrophy-based program, so power building. And that's to maintain your size. And during heavy compound movements, you actually burn the most calories lifting. So people think you do all these high reps, you're burning more calories. Your body's actually burning the most calories through your heavy compound lifts. So if you prioritize those and then do your sculpting work at the end, you'll have the best regimen for your weightlifting to burn fat and also maintain your size. And then for actually cutting down diet wise, you need to be in a caloric deficit. There's a couple different methods you can do. I'm a big fan of caloric cycling where you cycle your calories. It you works. S- Mike yeah. got me on this last summer. You it s- works. You cycle your calories down either every week, bi-weekly, whatever method you do, there's a ton of different ways you can do it. And that's to keep your mat- metabolism guessing because eventually you recycle back up and then restart the process. And that's to confuse your, your body so it doesn't adapt. And then I'm, I'm doing a new method that I haven't done before. That's the zigzag method right now, which is low during Sounds the week. Sounds scary. I love it. It's working better for me than the caloric cycling because during those weekends when I'm having still below my, my caloric maintenance, just a few calories below like 2,800 while I'm doing, I'm doing 1,500 all week, which is nothing. And I'm hungry as hell. But then I do the 2,800 on the weekends and I'm stuffed. And that's saying a lot because I can eat a lot of food. And well, I think one way to simplify everything is just say, yo dude, track your calories and just make sure you're eating below this number. Oh, the simplest way is yeah. If you just realistically losing weight is a matter of numbers. It's a a calculation. But if you're trying to lose body fat and maintain size like what you're doing, that's when macros become very, very important. So you've never tried like to go hard on fasting ever? I did a whole six weeks of intermittent fasting. What, 16 hour? 16, eight, yeah. Five and days a week. And Was it effective for you? Oh, five days a week. Come on. You're supposed to do only f- – you're not supposed to do it every day. Mike, I've been doing it every day for three years. Then research some more because that's bad for you. Dude, who knows what's bad? We'll be new studies out tomorrow. Maybe I will die tomorrow. Who knows, man? You see, uh, you see, Rogan went on a, a month long carnivore diet. Yeah, I did. It's see very that. interesting. Like, <laughs> I know that it's pretty controversial, but well, the it's a trendy diet right now. Yeah. Carnivore? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's strictly meat. Really? It and I don't know enough about diets to like give you a good stance on it. But one thing I can tell you is like that's just a lot of meat. How to do you buy. get your carbs in? It's no carbs. Oh, it's like just you get you. He said he probably did a little veggies here and there, right? I don't, I don't think so. Dude, there are a, a couple. There's a group online who's strictly carnivore, and they say like their energy is insane. I mean, well, think about the creatine you get from some of those meats too. Like testosterone. Well, yeah, he also eats wild game, which is you know that's Elk. so different than fine store bought meat. Mm. You know. Yeah, like I do like eat a lot of ground turkey. I couldn't imagine only eating ground turkey for like f- five months. Oh, God. Yeah, I don't see the harm in mixing in veggies. 
Well, so I've messed around with my diet a lot over the past like two, three years. What I've kind of landed on what I like the most is don't eat anything that's really processed and just I like going heavy on fruits and veggies and lean meats. I love fruits. It's the best snack, dude. I get fruit cups every single day. What do you do for fruit normally? Blueberry, strawberry? I get fruit cups from like Market Basket or whatever. And it has the assortment of like grapes, cantaloupe, pineapple, berries. It gives me a little bit of everything. And I, it just, it's the best thing to snack on because it's filling too. Well, between all of us and now all the podcast listeners as well, I've, I had a little bit of a health scare and didn't really tell anybody where I was having some issues with a low red blood cell, low white blood cell, and low platelet count. And so they were like, dude. Mm, maybe if you didn't fast every day for three years. Yeah, are you a, you a doctor, dude? <laughs> Jesus, well, so but is it better? It's actually to be determined. I don't know. I got to go get some more tests done. Damn, dude. But what they said, what the first thing they, and I had SIBO too. Really? So yeah, I did. What the hell? <laughs> it's pretty wild, I know. But they, um, the first thing they did is they got me on a low FODMAP diet. Okay. Do you know what okay. that is? Yeah. I and mean. You had to cu- I had to, so I had to cut out apples, which is really strange. Yeah. Interesting because, I don't know, probably the acidity of it. I, don't, I have no idea. Well, I had to cut out, like, onions, apples, um, eggs I had to cut out. Interesting. I'll tell you more. I'll show you guys all my test results after this. You're going to be like, oh, I dude, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I literally just had my physical... How do they say? Do they do a drug test too? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get everything chest STD free. Do they do a T test? A T test? Your testosterone? testosterone. My testosterone from the first time I got it tested was like, uh, like, two, like top five percentile or like crazy high. No way. <laughs> yeah, dude. How do they test it? Blood test? Um, there's there's a couple. I do blood and piss. So. Did you ask for it, or did they give it to you anyway? I ask. I always get my testosterone, te- my testosterone tested. W- what else do you get tested normally? Uh, SCDs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that HPV. Make, <laughs> make sure I don't that have that coronavirus it. test, dude. Yeah, what that coronavirus is crazy. It's just a fucking mm-hmm. hardcore flu. What did you see? Did you see any clips we just put up? Because I just had those research scientists up. No, what they say. They said that it was like a week by week basis, but yeah, the flu is way was way more deadly. People die from the flu every year. People like forget about the it. flu is very deadly. <laughs> yeah, but so I mean, what they tested for the most part is they tested the expectations for the disease because they're not doctors. What they do is they study the data and says, okay, is this going to be a global problem? And they're like, right now it's a week by week basis, but right now it's pretty controlled in China and no one mm-hmm. really has to freak out that much. I mean, the people who are dying too, isn't it mostly like elderly who yeah, can't, just like like weak immune systems. Get the flu, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's weak immune systems. I don't, yeah, but there's a dude in Boston with it. There was a dude in Woburn who got diagnosed the other day. Oh, so there's two dudes out here now. Dude, there's a couple in this area, I'm pretty sure. No way. Yeah. Kid from UMass Boston. I mean, he went to Wuhan for like... Yeah. yeah, what do you expect? It was um, probably Frankie Films. It was his fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Nonetheless, we got a plan with this lean out challenge. Is there anything else you want to touch on real quick? Uh, we always have a good time with every time we're in an episode. Brendan, you got anything you want to toss in? Not really. I mean, what else? I mean, we talked about the Arnold a good amount. Do you have anything else here? I'm just trying to think of the clips to, to send the slugs to cut up. Yeah, I think one thing that's going to be really cool about our process cutting is it's going to be pretty different. Like, I'm coming from a little bit of a higher body fat percentage, like you said very nicely. Mm-hmm. Then I'll be – like, I have to lose more body fat when maintain muscle versus you will probably focus a little bit on the size aspect. Like, I'm not even going to consider muscle size. Like, I'd be honestly happy if I lost a little bit of size to have more – better aesthetics which like you don't want to lose size at all right no because size is it's easier for you to get big it's not as easy for me to get big bro i can get big like this i know losing fat is the process that that's easy for me see that's why it's going to be interesting though because our our styles like your style may not work at all for me like it's interesting how it works works. but let's what we'll do is after this let's actually like write down exactly what the guidelines are and then we'll We'll print it. We'll sign a paper. We'll do some before pictures, do some after pictures. And so does May 1st work for you? Well, actually, what's today? So I'm thinking really. It's, it's February 14th. Why don't we do May 15th? It's three months. Well, what I'm thinking, too, is I want to start a vlog series after my booth at the Arnold. 
could be a cool vlog series if we're competing, but it would cost time on your end too. I want to start cutting this weekend though. Well, I've been cutting for a mo- month now, so I'm but, already... So I, but what I'm saying is on Sunday is when this starts. Like our competition. Yeah, let's go get the numbers done Sunday at Jimmit. We'll have one of them rig it up. How was it, like 20 bucks for that test? Well, you get the free passes because you get the whole hookup. <laughs> I think we'll get it free. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll be okay. We'll do that. Let's write down all our – should we do our, like, measurements too? Like our uh, waist and arms and stuff? Well, that's what I mean. Are you trying to actually do weekly measurements? Or are you trying to do, like, biweekly or monthly measurements? Or are you just trying to see no, before to end? Before and end. So nothing in between. Yeah, we're going to just leave it all up to just guess. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be like flat Stanley. I know. This <laughs> shit, bro. I'm, I'm veins pulsing out of my forehead, just pissed off. All Yo, the time. you were wicked cut in that right before the um, influencer power hour. Was that your most cut? No, no, dude. You were shredded, like right in that time frame. When you I, had abs. When, I remember when, people at that party were like, "Connor, whoa, you have abs, dude." L.A. was when I was at my leanest, and I stepped on the scale at a dangerously low number, and I was like, "All right, dude, you need to get some help." What were you? I was really low, dude. Above 150? Yeah. Okay. I'm 6'3". <laughs> I, I, I was 166. Jesus. And I was, like, I was like, oh. You were trying to cut for a lightweight? I was, well, I was on that Jesus diet, baby. See, dude, <laughs> that crucifix what, diet. So when you do a 24-hour fast, are you just, just coffee and water? Is that it? Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Seltzer. Mm. You would actually really be interested in trying it. You'd probably have to work up to it. But you reach this weird really weird conscious state where you're you're not anxious at all and your body's just like really th- very primal it's pure psycho state <laughs> have you done it before i've i've done uh, actually the longest i've fasted is two day fast i've done a two day fast and i've done juice cleanses for like three days and i hate it <laughs> well dude uh, of 24 hour fast like you reach a, a very interesting psychological place where you're not like like fucking pissed off or like whatever but dude i truly believe dieting is more of a percentage mental than it is physical honestly like we that's what people don't get we do not need food as much as we think we do no well the fact that you're thinking about that food makes you think you need that food you know Mm -hmm. it's psychological yeah like speaking of what's natural like the way people used to eat was feasting and fasting because like they they could find yeah it was whatever they their kill they hunted yeah dude that's that's what the paleo diet is yeah exactly yeah i would like if you want to mess around and see like kind of what happens to your brain in that state it's interesting you know steve jobs used to fast for four days at a time right when he'd go on these crazy um, binges when he's, like, building and developing product. That's the secret to billions. <laughs> Fasting. Don't eat. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Never eat again. <laughs> but there's also a diet out there called the snake diet. What's that? It, there's this guy. It's hilarious. There's this guy in Florida, and he's so hard on his clients. He, like, calls them fat asses. <laughs> and he's, like, crazy. And he's, like, yeah, I get them on the snake diet. I develop a little snake juice for them. They drink the snake juice. And he's, like, then I make sure they don't take a shower for, like, five days. Like, I rig them up. I torture them. And then they lose, like, ten pounds in five days. He's saying that, like, if you deprive your body of even the fluid you get from the shower, because you know how your body absorbs a little bit of water, like – you just reach this ketogenic state where your body's just like shredding through shit. And so he creates some sort of, I'll actually look it up. He creates some sort of liquid. I don't know if that appeals to me. Yeah, what? <laughs> Snake Are people diet. lining up for this? People who are like severely overweight, actually, yeah. it's pretty effective. Snake diet transformed this man's body. It recommends starting with a 48 hour fast and repeating a 72 hour one, but experts are certainly. <laughs> The snake juice is water, sodium chloride, potassium chloride, baking soda, and magnesium sulfate. Sodium chloride is Himalayan pil- uh, salt, and mag- magnesium sulfate is food-grade Epsom salts. So it's just it's like salty water. He just has him drink for like 72 hours, and, and then he doesn't have meat. Don't, don't you die if you drink too much salt water? Hey, man. It looks like it works. <laughs> right? Like- uh, yeah, but look, this is highlighted. But experts it's are highlighted, cer- bro. <laughs> but experts are certainly not sold on the idea of fasting for long-term health and weight benefits. This is likely to negatively impact immune function and metabolism, as well as a host of other normal bodily functions. But hey, that's the snake diet, man. Yo, are you gonna 
not try to lose weight then on your cut? Or I'm going to win the competition under no, all I, circumstances. No, I ask because I'm like actively, and I'll tell you this now, I'm trying to lose like 15, 20 pounds. I would like to be 180 pounds. So I'd like to lose six pounds of purely fat. Yeah. Okay. Where do you hold most of your fat? Right on my stomach. Yeah. It fucking sucks. That, I get a little on the side, and I also get in my cheeks a little bit. Bro, it's funny, though. I have zero fat on my arms and legs. Literally, like, you can't even pinch you my skin. And your back. And my, well, my lower back. Like, the love handle area and the abdominal areas where all of my fat gets stored. But your upper back is, like, totally yeah. ripped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. 100 percent bro my, my veins gonna get crazy um we're nonetheless gonna, we're gonna be freaks dude <laughs> it's gonna be awesome we gotta get some content from this dude i think we should yeah. vlog well, yeah, on you, this shit you should put it on a youtube page didn't you do it with your with a, a book Bison for life and it, people loved it bro because it's like you're learning a process too especially like when you show a, a process and then actually show the success at the end people are gonna believe it because it actually happened i reach a really dark place though when i go like crazy <laughs> cut where i just like need to be alone for a little bit <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I'm, I I don't know if I'm going to be on camera every day being like, hey, this is what's going on. But, I, I mean, I will do some weekly check-ins with you. Don't you, don't, don't you like, do no fap during those times? Oh, I go crazy. <laughs> Watch out. Oh, you got a juggernaut. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to get nuts, man. Nonetheless, happy Valentine's Day, Mikey Bonkers. Thanks, man. <laughs> I'm Mike Rose of Anabolic Aliens, and that was my Emerald Hour.